Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this video. Uh, in the previous four videos, we discussed about masters in Netherlands, in data science, computer science, teaching assistant, part-time jobs, and how is a master thesis in Netherlands with Leonid Datta, he's from India. He finished his uh, masters in computer science, data science in TU Delft, Netherlands very recently. So in this video, we'll specifically focus on his thesis topic, which was spanning for almost like a year, because thesis is a very integral part of the master's in Netherlands, where you do a very dedicated research and work in that field. So his work is like a subset of the data science, which is in computer vision. So we'll try to distill it as clearly or as in a simple words what his work is so that maybe most of you can understand who are interested to apply for computer vision so off to you Leonid like can you please briefly explain in plain words if possible what is your research or thesis about yeah so uh, I did my master thesis in computer vision and uh, I did uh, under the supervision of Dr. Yan who is uh, the head of the computer vision lab in Tudelft uh, so, so, uh, so training uh, computer vision models, or uh, if we become more specific, then convolutional neural network models, is very difficult with a lack of data. So, if there is a lack of data, that means we have a lack of knowledge because data generates knowledge. So, when there is a lack of knowledge, uh, we need to transfer a similar knowledge from our task. So this is an uh, umbrella concept, which is also known as transfer learning. And when this transfer learning is, uh, is done in a way that we transfer the knowledge of same task, both of the settings are doing a same task, but on a different kind of distribution of data or on a, on a different domain of data, uh, then it is called uh, domain adaptation. So we are transferring knowledge of our same task, but on a different data. So for example, uh, if we have a task of recognizing a baby face or a recognizing an old face. So maybe we have uh, a distribution of a human face uh, from let's say Netherlands uh, and <clears throat> the number of people or the number of data we have is very less let's say 100 so it's very hard to train or it's not very hard it's impossible to train a, a proper deep learning model with that kind of data <clears throat> so uh, what we can do is maybe we have a da huge data set which is maybe of south asian people and we transfer and in that data set we have uh, the same kind of data and same uh, task of data that we, we need to find the whether this is a baby face or an aged face. So what we can do is we can transfer that knowledge to the current uh, settings of identifying baby face or an aged face in the amongst the Dutch people. So <clears throat> what we can do is we, we transfer that knowledge of doing uh, the same task on different data distribution and this is called a domain adaptation. Now, since we have some data available in the current task, so uh, it is sorry to interrupt. I, 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 no, no, no. Uh, I have a doubt because I was lost in the middle. Uh, like um, maybe I did not un understand it properly because it's not my field, but I know a little bit about it. So. Uh, in the example that you gave uh, about the domain adaptation, uh, was it like uh, so in one domain, you say like identifying the baby face, uh, whatever feature set you have, uh, you try to transfer that to some other domain. Uh, so what is the other domain? Is it also related to recognition of some kind of faces or it can be like uh, identifying whether someone is an expert or not by seeing some video frames or so it can be like a random arbitrary domain or it should have some overlap with the existing domain uh, when you see this kind of transfer of the features or how is it uh, i mean what is the possibility yeah so both of the settings is possible when it's the same task 
then we call it a domain adaptation if it is a different task or a same task we call it transfer learning so transfer learning is an umbrella term where we are transferring our knowledge or weight and when we are doing it for the same task we call it domain ad domain adaptation though there is a, a lot of confusion about these terms because these these terms are human generated and generated very recently so there are confusions but uh, we usually follow this convention of defining things okay. so this is called domain adaptation now domain adaptation can be of several types types uh, we define mainly two types of domain adaptation one is supervised and one is unsupervised and there is also a semi supervised but i'm not talking about it here so in supervised domain adaptation you have very less number of data in your current task and in unsupervised domain adaptation you have you don't have any data about the current task so my task uh, my thesis was on supervised domain adaptation where i have very few level data as examples of my current task so uh, in my thesis um, i used so the most uh, met common method of doing this thing is you transfer the knowledge and then you fine tune that knowledge on the current task but my uh, thesis quite uh, took a quite different approach so my thesis said that uh, the weights you need is already hidden in that knowledge and we need to uh, rearrange that knowledge in a way that it works better on the actual actual uh, work setup so the amount of rearrangement or the all the possible rearrangement of the weights is basically intractable because even if you have 32 numbers the ways it can be rearranged is 32 factorial which is quite high uh, so, can i say one brief thing sorry so sorry to interrupt uh, no 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 it was clear i just want uh, to clarify it further like uh, again i may have understood it wrong but uh, what i was saying was like um, so as i understand uh, you have uh, some kind of base which is same but above that there are certain variations you would need to do depending on the domain right yeah Or, okay okay now it is more clear for me thank okay, you okay fine yeah uh, so yeah i, I was explaining uh, yeah so uh, the number of rearrangements is basically intractable because you can't uh, calculate all the possible rearrangements of weights because if you have 500 weights it becomes 500 factorial and uh, that is that is in one layer so if there are two three layers then it becomes 500 factorials into 500 factorials into 500 factorials so that's not tractable so uh, it basically becomes a, a discrete optimization problem that we have uh, we have a indefinite number of almost indefinite number of possibles possible ways and we need to we need to find a way that finds a good enough solution so the ground truth is never known whether my solution is the optimal solution is never known but we can verify that my solution is good enough or not yeah so so that is how i approached it and uh, so it was on it was on uh, on this it was a first work actually which uh, explored uh, discrete optimization uh, for supervised domain adaptation as far as i know we couldn't find any paper uh, which deal to it that one so our method worked uh, well on uh, when there is very much lack of data for example uh, we started from 50 data samples with a 10 class uh, data problem and we we went for three uh, for three separate data sets which was 50 100 and 150 so five samples per class is is very less but our me method still worked so that is how i approached it if you if someone wants to know more about it Yeah, you yes. can uh, check the description box. The, the uh, link. Yeah, on the, uh, we, we, they will uh, so Samit will put put the link on the description box, and he can check the check my thesis. So currently, I'm working on the extension of it, and hopefully, I'll have a publication from it. Okay, let's see. Apart from the different uh, applications you mentioned, are there any specific uh, major applications of this work in? 
maybe industry or uh, anything that comes to your mind like where can this be applied uh, maybe for betterment or something like uh, yeah so uh, i think the main application or uh, the main problem tackle was the data problem so uh, so uh, where, where whenever there is a supervised domain adaptation problem uh, we can try on on different kinds of data but definitely that that's a hypothesis we can try and we uh, we, we can check if it works or not because definitely this is uh, there are strong assumption behind that the, the that the weights are already existing which is uh, which is definitely a strong assumption so uh, we we need to we need to see the setups and also we need to see what kind of transfer we are doing uh, from what kind of data we are we are transferring to which kind of data so these are the things that we need to verify uh, then we can say that yeah this can work or not but definitely we have to try on that yeah okay uh, so final question on this is uh, what motivated you uh, to be inclined towards this field like what is your main source of motivation yeah so when uh, i was uh, i was doing the course of computer uh, of the course of deep learning uh, i kind of find it very found it very interesting uh, though i did not do the, do the course of computer vision specifically so uh, but uh, my uh, my project on deep learning was on actually computer vision uh, because uh, my professor works on computer vision but uh, his approach is more based on the deep learning aspect of the computer vision uh, because uh, deep learning is a method and computer vision is kind of a task so he uses more deep learning uh, based approach to the computer vision uh, so that is how I got interested uh, uh, while doing the project. Then I approached him. He said, it's fine if you have the deep learning course only. In fact, even if you don't have the course, people, the professors don't care unless he feels that, uh, till he feels that you can do it. Or uh, you can ask him that, okay, let me try. But uh, I think don't internationals don't try that because it's a bit problematic for them if the thesis get extended. So... Uh, that is how I got into the project, and yeah, so finally I defended it after uh, after getting fainted. Yeah, so we also discuss about the fainting in the previous video and yeah. master thesis. So don't take too much stress. And thank you very much, Leonid, for simplifying your thesis, which is kind of an emerging field. And I hope that it also motivates or uh, uh, sparks the curiosity or interest among the people in the computer vision field. Um, share this video with all your friends if you want to be interested in this or maybe want to work in the future, maybe contact him uh, about this field. So don't forget to like this video if you like it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Till next video, goodbye from Netherlands.